The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual co-host and do not reflect the official policy or position of the Firearms Radio Network and or their employers. Viewer discretion is advised. This is especially true on our live shows. Broadcast for shooters, hunters, and gun enthusiasts, this is the Firearms Radio Network. The bandwidth for this episode of This Week in Guns is sponsored by Patriot Patch Company. PatriotPatch.co Welcome to This Week in Guns. This show is brought to you by the Firearms Radio Network and Patriot Patch Company. And this show offers commentary on the latest firearms industry news, information, and buzz. I'm your host, Sean Heron, and it's my pleasure tonight to introduce our panelists. Uh, welcome back. Host of the Firearms Insider Gunning Gear Review Podcast and owner lead instructor at Contextual Defense and Consulting, Zane Mangillo. Welcome back, buddy. Hey, what's going on, Sean? And uh, next up, we've got a newbie to this week in guns. He's the owner and founder of No Other Choice Firearms Training and the man behind Aiming for the Truth. It, uh, that is a community outreach program. Looks like it's growing really fast and uh, doing a lot of good. Kevin Dixie, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks, Sean. Thanks for having me on, brother. Glad to have you, man. All right, guys. Uh, don't forget Patriot Patch Company, Patch of the Month Club, PatriotPatch.co. I don't even know what's coming out this next month, but I'm already excited, and you will be too. And you know what? Even if even if you don't like patches, they've got cleaning mats, amazing T-shirts, so that you can let everyone know exactly how you think. PatriotPatch.co. And we'll talk about our other advertiser, Manticore Arms, just a little bit later in the show. So, guys, let's go ahead and kick it off with our top story. Uh, rest in peace, Gunny. R. Lee Ermy dead at age 74. Uh, this was released on his Twitter by his longtime manager. And uh, looks like pneumonia got him a battle with pneumonia. And uh, my Facebook basically turned into the R. Lee Ermy uh, show for uh, probably about two days. How about you guys? Yeah, that and uh, Instagram. It was just R. Lee Ermy everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much the same on my end, man. It was, um, you felt that loss. Like, you know, you know, that one, that one resonated with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I've, uh, I've said many times that actors and stuff, I don't really care what their opinions are, things like that. And Jeremy, uh, from We Like Shooting pointed out, he's like, Arlie Army did a ton of great stuff for his beloved Corps and all other military branches. He, he loved the military and he did a lot of stuff for him. And I think that's one of the reasons that, uh, people were so profoundly attached to him. Yeah, I, I 100% agree. So it's funny story. I had never seen the movie Full Metal Jacket up until about a week before I left for a boot camp in the Marine Corps. <laughs> and I was horrified um, at that point. <laughs> uh, so uh, and, and the hat I'm wearing tonight actually is signed by the gunny. Uh, it says Simplify Arlie Army. Uh, I never had the pleasure of actually meeting him, but I did get a signed hat from him. So RIP, gunny. Very cool. I met him a couple times, just briefly shook his hand at the Glock booth. But uh, Aaron from We Like Shooting has a funny story that uh, he came out of uh, one of the porta potties and we had been standing there talking to the gunny for a few minutes. Aaron didn't realize who we were talking to because his back was facing him. So he walked up and he said something about his bowel movement that he had just left in the porta potty. And uh, Arlie Ermy <laughs> turned around and looked at him like he had three heads growing out of his neck and then just turned around and completely ignored him for the rest of the time that we were there. <laughs> It was, Sounds about right. <laughs> it, it was pretty great. So, uh, rest in peace, Gunny. And hey, Suzanne, you're you're a Marine. Yes, sir. I uh, I had this thing uh, that someone was asking. They said, if you're not a Marine, can you tell a Marine Semper Fi? Man, that's I don't I don't have a problem with it. And most of the guys I know don't. I know some guys kind of. I don't know. It's it's one of those things. To where it's it's kind of a like a, a brotherhood thing, but I certainly do not take offense to it, um, personally. Yeah, all right. but you know, some people do, I guess. Yeah, that that seems to be uh, that's the answer I've gotten from all three Marines that I asked. They don't really care; doesn't matter to them at all. No, nope, that's I. It doesn't matter to me. I I just appreciate it, you know. But I know some people think that's you know a very sacred thing, and and I respect that I you know ideology too. So. Yeah, very cool. Uh, let's let's hear a little bit from uh, Full Metal Jack Hannah. here. Toe jam. Pop that blister. <laughs> Jesus H. Christ. Private 
pile. Why is your footlocker unlocked? Sir, I don't know, sir. Private pile, if there is one thing in this world that I hate, it is an unlocked footlocker. You know that, don't you? Sir, yes, sir. If it wasn't for kids like you, there wouldn't be any thievery in this world, would there? Sir, no, sir. <laughs> oh, what, what a role, man, that guy. <laughs> Because if you let it go on much further, there's going to be way too many leaps <laughs> in this episode. I know, totally. I was I was trying to remember exactly where they kicked in, and I was like, I think this is a safe time for me to just go ahead and fade right out. Yeah, he's such a good actor, too, man. Yeah, he was good. That was definitely a role he was meant to play. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, next story, gun rights supporters rally at state capitals across the country. This comes to us from the Sacramento Bee. And uh, we, we kind of talked about this a little bit last week, but it looks like hundreds of people showed up uh, just depending on the state and things like that. Did you guys go and did anyone show up? I'll start with you, Kevin. Uh, no, I didn't make it to my, my, my rally at the state Capitol on that weekend. I was down in Kentucky at the USCCA show. Um, and I, I kind of had some plans, so I couldn't cancel. And uh, the rallies were kind of announced. I'm not going to say last minute, but it was cutting it pretty close. It, it was pretty last minute. I, I completely agree with that. And it, I had questions about the group that was organizing it and some of the things that they were asking for. Uh, that just, yeah, I, I definitely had questions. I think we would have had um, better, sh- better uh, attendance had we uh, had a little bit more time and uh, they were a little bit more open in, in, in some things. Uh, Zane, how about you? Uh, so I had planned on going, um, buddy of mine were, we were both going to go and something came up for both of us, which is pretty a terrible excuse because we knew about it and still didn't go. Um, you know, it's it just, I feel like it's a good thing. Paul Revere didn't come up with an excuse, <laughs> right. um, but, but yeah, it, it is, it is about seven and a half hour drive for me to the state Capitol. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was not advertised extremely well, um, like you said, the what was it? The National Coalition for Patriotic Americans. Yeah, the that NCCPA. The, that's the group who did it. Yeah, we've we've got to do better as a gun industry of of getting the world out, the word out there. We've got to stop bickering as much amongst ourselves. And oh, the NRA sucks. No, the NRA is great. And oh, you know, join GOA instead. And I don't know. We've got to do better at bringing everyone together and just and the other side is really good at organizing stuff and we've, we've got to, um, we got to do better. Yeah. And I will say that, uh, you know, the NRA, you just mentioned them, they, they would be a, a very, very good driver of stuff like this. Show up at your state houses. I don't think there's any conflict of interest for them there. I think that they have, uh, a, a, at least a, a member base of over 5 million people that they could have spread that word to. But of course, you know, they're staying out and, and, and doing some other things now. I did see a lot of pictures, lots of open carry AR-15s, lots of Molan Labe, lots of Gadsden flags, lots of uh, rebel flags and things like that. I think that maybe I'm going to show up uh, to the next one that I go to in a suit and tie. I think I think that's the way well, I'm going to roll. I, I don't disagree with you. And and, I'll, I, and to be fair, I saw some a little bit of everything from, from the one here in Florida. There were some dudes in suits and ties and there were some guys in – well, not in Florida. There wasn't anyone in full kit. Because open carry is not legal in Florida, but in other ones across the country, there were, you know, dudes rolling on plate carries and ARs and, you know, skull mask on the face. And while that's your right, man, um, I don't think that represents us in the best light. Um, you know, I couldn't agree more. It's, it's, we have to, I'm sorry, go ahead, Zane. My bad. No, no, go, go ahead. I I was done, Kevin. We have to we have to, I think that, you know, it's 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 hard, right? Because you don't want to tell guys that you shouldn't express yourself because that's one of the things we all fight for, right? Like mm-hmm. be yourself, express yourself, speak your mind. At the same time, I think when it comes to to this fight we're in, um, we're not in a physical battle. We're in a battle of intellect. We're in a battle of um of of considering the variables and being strategic and methodical about your approaches. And one of the things that we need to be able to do is bring people to the table, right? So how I mean, really think about it. one of the things that I think I do fairly well is I like to call it converting people. I get people to see the other side and at least come to the middle. And I've done that on camera several times. I've seen well, it. the only way to do that is to be approachable. And if I'm already, you know, whether it's from fear or past experiences or just what I see on TV, if I'm already anti-gun or fear firearms, am I really going to walk up to a guy carrying a rifle? Like, I mean, really, am I going to approach him? Um, we're at those rallies. If you are in jeans and a t-shirt or a suit or something like that, 
you might be more approachable. But then I also understand the whole portion of, hey, I'm going to put this in your face because you need to understand how passionate I am about it. And it's my first amendment right to tell you that I get it. Uh, just we have to consider what kind of battle we're having to win the war. So if, if right now, if it's a battle of intellect, a battle of conversation, a battle of exposure, we have to be approachable in order to do that. Otherwise, you're not going to get a seat at the table. Yeah. And I actually, I said that on uh, one of my other shows Monday, I said, we are not in a war. We are in a battle of propaganda and public relations and we are doing a terrible job. Yeah. Yeah, for, for sure. I mean, and, 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 you know, to just kind of bounce off what, what Kevin said, I, I'm, I'm down, man. I'm going to steal a line from Chuck Pressburg. I can grab my plate carrier and my AR and run down to the end of my driveway every morning, you know, screaming, but until I look left and right and there's nobody else down there. I'm just going to go back in and make some eggs, you know? So like, it's not really, that's not that, that image doesn't help us in the intellect battle. Like you're talking about that image only helps us when it's gone too far and that's what it's come to. But when it comes to rallies and and just trying to represent yourself as a community, I don't think it's helpful. Uh, And arguably, I mean, there's, there's plenty of people out there who don't even think these rallies are even helpful. That is just preaching to the choir. And even if it's that, it at least is getting the community kind of a little more uh, unified. Because there were – that's one thing I say about the rallies. There were hunters there. you know, There were tactical dudes there. There was people from all areas of the gun community, which I think a lot of times we separate ourselves in little uh, minor groups in that as well. So even if that's the only good it brings, we've got to come together as community. Yeah, I definitely agree. Good stuff, guys. Uh, next up, we've got gun rights groups ask attorney general sessions to withhold funds from anti two a cities in the States. This article comes to us from ammo land.com. I kind of laughed a little bit at this one. Uh, this is the citizens committee for the right to keep and bear arms. They wrote the attorney general and said the liberal municipal governments of such cities as New York, Chicago, San Francisco, and Seattle, and states including New Jersey, Connecticut, California, and Massachusetts should not be receiving taxpayer funds while violating the constitutional rights of those taxpayers. It is ironic that all of those places are willing to spend millions of dollars to attack the rights of gun owners when they should be protecting civil and constitutional rights, including the Second Amendment. So, yeah, I I thought this was uh, interesting and kind of a, a fun request. I don't this is not going to go anywhere ever, but I, I did think it, I was like, that's pretty ballsy and I like it. I agree. I mean, they use politics to attack us. Why not? You know, if you know, it's not going to go anywhere. Sometimes it's just about proving a point that we are paying attention. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm with it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, why don't we just withhold all federal money from all the states and get a major tax break for everybody? Yeah, I, I completely 100 percent. Yeah, I, I'm like, yeah, withhold it, it all. Don't give California this, any this, federal this cash. This whole thing is is funny to me because I, I this kind of runs along the same lines as as the there's there's a whole argument right now over whether the, the federal government should go in and enforce federal laws in states that won't enforce them. And it for a while it was real popular for our side, if you want to call it that, but the the more right leaning side to want the federal government to go and enforce immigration laws against California. And then when there were the federal government was talking about enforcing federal gun laws, that same side was, you know, all up in arms like, oh, well, states' rights. So I, I, I just I feel like we should get the federal government out of the states overall in general. Yeah, I'm 100 percent fine with that. I'll tell you what, though, I, I think the big problem here is that a lot of these states and and their district or Supreme Courts in those states uh, don't think that they are uh, infringing on the Second Amendment and have said so in cases. I mean, there's precedent there. So, oh, they absolutely don't think they are. They oh, I know. Absolutely don't think they're infringing on rights. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, their courts are are, are agreeing with them, and I think that that's a, that's a problem. Uh, Maybe the Supreme Court needs to take a couple of these cases, which makes me extremely nervous. However, um, you know, at the same yeah. time, I think. Precedent does need to be set one way or the other, uh, as terrifying as that, that, that statement is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Uh, next up, New York judge arrested on felony gun charge. This comes to us from the Maven. Good Lord. I, uh, read this and I was like, uh, I don't even know what's happening in this person's life. So this is a Ro- Rochester city court judge, Leticia 
Astacio, and she's been arrested on gun charges. So she went to a Dick's Sporting Goods, which we all know better than that. Uh, they would not sell her a gun because she is a prohibited person. Uh, she told them, well, I'm just going to go buy it in another place. So when she left, they called that other place. And when the other place saw her, which was another Dick's Sporting Goods, uh, they told her they would not sell her a gun. And according to her court-ordered probation conditions, she is prohibited from possessing a firearm, dangerous weapon, or nauseous substance. Now, uh, she wrote a bunch of Facebook posts, and then she said, oh, it was my sister. They mistook, they mistook her for me. And her sister went to Facebook and said, nope, not me. I was not there. I am actually a concealed carrier, and I take that responsibility very, very seriously and would not jeopardize it with her. I uh, thought that was kind of interesting. Then they talk a, bit, a little bit more about her antics and just like she's not even allowed in the courthouse. She has to work at the, the law library. Then she got a doctor's note that that's not acceptable. Anyway, she's crazy. And uh, what do you guys think? So you mean to tell me, let me just make sure, because I want to make sure that I'm, I'm hearing this in the United States of America. You mean to tell me that somebody, um, a judge, so we're assuming passed the bar and all those type of things, which – Last time I checked, you had to have a criminal background check in order to do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, was a, a, a judge. So clearly people have looked into your background and investigated you and made sure that, you know, you could hold that position. Yes. They look into your family. They talk to your neighbors. They want to know, you, you know, everything about you to make sure you can be over people and, and uh, control people's lives. Then you're constantly getting monitored to make sure you're doing the right thing. So, man, and you mean to tell me that when that person went into a store, even though we don't like that store, when they went into the store, that store was wise enough to say, no, you're a prohibited person. Yeah. So th that background check worked and she wasn't allowed to obtain a firearm. Mm -hmm. So weird. Huh? Okay. I just, I didn't know we had background checks in America. I was just making sure. So am I wrong in understanding that her reasoning for being prohibited was over a DUI? It, it is a is DUI. That the story said? Yep. It's a DUI. So my question is, what is, you know, making a poor decision with your uh, driving have to do with your right to own a firearm. Like, like I, I get it. Like, she's a prohibited person, and after being denied, you probably shouldn't go to the sister store of the store you went to and then proclaim you're going there. Right. Like you're just kind of asking for trouble at that point. But yeah. at the same time, why are we stripping people's rights? Over uh, the U.S. is a misdemeanor in Florida. I don't. I, apparently, it's a felony no, in New no, York, I'm assuming? Not a felony. It was not the, her her rights were not stripped, but uh due to the conditions of her probation, these things were spelled out inside of it. Okay. So so she's not a felon. Correct. She's not even what she, the only reason she's a prohibited person because that's part of her probation agreement. Which Correct. she agreed to that. So Yep. But I just man, I just I just if someone is a, a judge, if we trust that person to – that person is tr is entrusted with, with being fair to me on a bench, and but we don't trust them enough to have a firearm, I'm just – I don't know. She, uh, she is also upset because it is a hostile workplace because they make her go through a metal detector that they don't make other judges go through. Well, they make me go through a metal test to go to the courtroom. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, she she sounds full blown. I, I totally get what you're saying, Zane. I I, no, I I agree. I agree with you. I think she's probably kind of off her rocker, or or maybe uh. But at the same time, I just this whole this whole story is just weird. I couldn't agree more. And I love the image is just her sobbing in like a convict orange. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's New York. What can you say? It's kind yeah, of crazy. That's a, that's a weird place. Yeah. It is. Anything else on that one, Kevin? No, man. I just think I just wanted to point out that, you know, for the, the, the people that believe that you don't have to have background checks, I just want to point out the irony that a judge was denied purchasing a firearm, you know, when they performed the background check. I just wanted to make sure everybody heard that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, you think as a judge, she would know how to get that, 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 uh, gun show loophole. Right. You know, I, I, there are a lot of those out there. I thought she could have found one. And you would think because maybe she's probably seen a couple of cases about it. Yeah. Maybe, you know, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Or that dreaded internet loophole. That too. That one. Yeah, yeah. That's a good one too. I guess she just doesn't pay attention to the mainstream media. Well, judges aren't criminals, so they don't know how to get around stuff. So. That's true. That's true. Hey, uh, patent issued to 2A armament for regulated AR bolt carrier. Thought this one was kind of interesting. This is uh, 
coming from the 2A armament, they they have been awarded the patent for their gas regulation system that has been incorporated in their bolt carrier system by the USPTO. This system allows adjustments in the felt recoil, spent cartridge ejection pattern, as well as eliminating the need to replace other components of the rifle while running a suppressor. So it looks like they're taking the job, a little bit of the job of an adjustable gas block and throwing it into the bolt carrier group. Thoughts on this? Mm, yeah. I, I don't know. Um, I don't really care. Like <laughs> I, I buy my guns and I shoot my guns. I don't really build guns. So I don't, I, I don't shoot suppressed. I don't, I don't have a need for an adjustable system. So this is meh for me. It's cool. I, but. I think this one's really cool because a, you don't have to take the rifle apart to do it. You don't have to undo any screws or anything like that. They give you the bit that you need and you can just make these adjustments. And for like gas systems or if you want to, you know, adjust the recoil on a system or even adjust your ejection pattern or your brass, I, I think it's pretty decent. Kevin, thoughts on that? Yeah, I think innovation is awesome. So if it's innovative and it works, um, and then for functionality, if you are going to run, if you're running a can on your, your your system, and you can make those adjustments right there at the bolt. Um, I think I think that it's cool. I would be interested. Do we have a, a MSRP on it, or what they're they're thinking they're going to put it out for? I didn't see one in the article, and I didn't see one on their website when I went to check it out. But I'm sure it's going to be probably my guess is upper two hundreds, three hundred dollars, something like that. Is is this is this new though? Aren't there uh, BCGs that, that you can adjust the care, the, the gas system or the, the gas regulation on already. Like, so is this a new thing? I, I know there are BCGs that you can adjust. However, I'm not sure what the mechanism is. And I did try to look up this patent before the show so I could see specifically which part of this they had patented, but I, I couldn't find it. And, uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, these are $439 by the way, Kevin. Okay, oh. so now you're talking a whole different ballgame because now I'm looking at, you know, what's my time worth? Do I, you know, th- did I already buy a good, you know, adjustable gas block where I can still reach what I'll take in the hand guard off and, you know, do my tweaks there? I don't know, man, 439 bucks, dude. Even if you can get it for 400 in, a, in retail, I mean, that's that's half of a, a, of a decent man's rifle. I don't know. That's That's pretty up there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It, it is an option for those who don't want to take their ARs apart uh, and have a lot of disposable income. I'm curious to see. I think, uh, you know, this this is a little bit of innovation. Uh, I'm curious, Zane, if that prior art of people that actually have products that do similar things with the bolt carrier group, if, if there's uh, any litigation on that, because I'm sure they're going to start enforcing their patent. So, yeah, we, we'll see. They may be, they may be the, uh, the Springfield of or the you know, cheaper than dirt or the whatever of next month. We'll never, we'll see soon. I guess we'll see. We shall see. All right, guys. PA school district arms teachers with mini baseball bats to defend, defend against arm threats. Uh, I think we had talked about this a little more and I, we saw the guy who brought a bunch of buckets of river rocks to his classroom. And then we see this, uh, the small baseball bats and uh, the river rocks I thought was a decent idea, but I think that the baseball bats were kind of a joke. Did you guys see this? And what are your thoughts? I so, did. Go ahead, Kevin. Okay. So, you know, you are, I get, I get the, I get what they're trying to do. I, I really do. Um, but I can, I can tell you now um, <laughs> you're not winning a gunfight with a mini bat. Um it's going to be pretty difficult to do for somebody who's not trained in uh, self-defense and things of that nature. Now, maybe if you had a, somebody in there with a martial arts background or really knew uh, some basic jujitsu or something, and they were close enough, situation was perfect, maybe. Uh, but arming them with many baseball bats does what against when you're, let's, let's be honest, the threat you're worried about is a firearm. That's what you're trying to, you know, fight back against. Um, Zane, I know you teach self-defense, Sean. I know you're a shooter and I, I teach it as well. Um a mini bat is not 21 feet long. You get shot. Yeah. So I don't, I don't, I don't No. I no. I get the point. I don't see it working. Zane. So what kind of what bothers me is that they have acknowledged a problem exists, right? And they have acknowledged the best way to fix that problem is to retaliate against that problem with deadly force. Because obviously a, a mini bat, is force that is likely to cause death or great bodily injury. So they've acknowledged that a threat exists. They've acknowledged that they need to do something to curb that threat. 
And instead of choosing the best tool for the job, they said, well, here, here's a mini baseball bat. Like, I don't understand where the disconnect takes place. Yeah. So the school superintendent said that they were largely symbolic, a last resort for teachers who want to fight back, not just hide and wait. And then later in the article mentions that it, there was a $1,800 cost for all these miniature baseball bats. They're not largely symbolic. They're 100% <laughs> symbolic. Right. I don't know if you guys have ever hit anything with these. These things snap like at the, the drop of a hat. Yeah, they're not. They're, I think they're, they're really, like I said, man, their sentiment is there. But they're, it's a reason why guys and gals around this country carry firearms to defend themselves against firearms. It, it, it. It's it's just not something that's smart. I mean, what do you if a guy if a crazy kid you know does something like what happened at Parkland? First of all, you didn't even have, you had a armed professional or professionals that we found out later that wouldn't go and attack him with body armor and guns and a whole nine yards. What makes you think some brave soul is going to attack a guy with a mini bat? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't I mean, make sense. Kind of ridiculous. No, no it, it doesn't make sense. The the only if if you recognize that a deadly a deadly threat exists and you recognize that you need to respond to that deadly threat with deadly force and your answer is a bat like i just i have to i have to question your sanity at that point yeah it it doesn't seem to make a whole lot of, whole lot of sense and i'm sure that $1800 could not have been spent you know in a much better place no no, we don't need books in schools or anything like that, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, no, none of that stuff. Okay. Uh, very interestingly, guys, Vermont governor signs very restrictive gun laws. Uh, this is Vermont on Wednesday raised the age to buy firearms, banned high-capacity magazines, and made it easier to take guns from people who pose a threat. The first significant gun ownership restrictions in state history signed into law by a Republican governor. Wow. Uh, I think that, that says pretty much everything. Kevin, thoughts? Um. You know, when certain places start getting gun restrictions, it should make you worry. Florida, Vermont, you know, mm-hmm. those kind of places are supposed to. I mean, Vermont's what is their state slogan? Um, Live free or die or something <laughs> like, yeah. like it's 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 Vermont. You're not supposed to have gun laws there. And but it, it should go to show it doesn't shock me at this point. But what I would like for uh, I don't know what the proper term is, pro-gun. Or if you want to say conservative or Republican or whatever, um, you got to stop assuming because somebody has a political title that they're for your rights. Politics is all about power, man. It, it just is. Now, there is a certain alliance you would assume there's a higher probability they have, granted, but it's still about power and control. And people want to keep their jobs, whether you like it or not. So if that's what that guy had to do in order to keep his job and, you know, get reelected. In the way he seems or what he thinks is going to work, he's going to do it. We have to stop assuming, oh, you know what? You wore a red tie. So that means you're going to defend my rights. No. And I think that they've shown us that this time. Like, this is not about politics. It's not about left and right. And you start seeing these free states like Florida with a, with Republicans that wrote the laws. It's not like, like they even backed them. They wrote them. Um, Vermont, you got a governor signing the laws. I mean, what's next? Arizona? I mean, but that's the kind of thing we're opening ourselves up for because we're lazy. We put these people in office and say, hey, you know what? President Trump's never going to do anything anti-gun. Neither is my governor. Neither is my alderman because they're Republican. I'm good. We don't need to fight. So I think that um, it should be a yet another wake up call for us in short. Yeah, Zane. Yeah. And to, to double down on what you said, not only did the Floridians down here write the laws, the Democrats down here voted against our 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 latest laws. So yeah, you, you can't just because someone has an R or D behind their name, don't trust them. Uh, you need to look at who the person is and you need to go to your voting booth and you need to think very critically before you get there. Indeed. And uh, we need to not forget as quickly and easily as we do. We need to remember when people go against our fundamental human rights and uh, make sure that we make them pay in the voting booth. And and more importantly than that, vote in the early elections, the primaries. So, you know, w- once you get to the the general election, you know, you, everyone votes R or D. You got to get in there in the primaries. Mm-hmm. Yep, very, very interesting, and uh, some crazy things coming out of the east there. Uh, Parkland School rejects arming staff. 
Uh, I thought that this was fairly interesting. They obviously just had the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas uh, incident that that happened there. Very, very tough. Now they've rejected arming their staff members, and I think that's uh, kind of crazy. So the Broward County School Board on Tuesday said that it wouldn't participate in a state program that allows certain staff members to carry firearms. You know, the, the Sean. Yeah, go ahead. Sean, I, I, I cannot understand how anyone is against this program. Um, I watched the live stream of our local county and the sheriff address members of the public over it. And there's only one person in my little podunk county against it. Um, but just so everyone's aware, this program that they opted out of is a program that provides school staff other than teachers. So it's not for teachers. It's for other administrative. Now, if a teacher is also a coach or uh, something like that, they can do it. But if you're only a teacher, you're not even eligible for the program. It provides them with 110 hours of firearms training, the majority of which is dedicated to uh, active shooter events. This entire program is literally – it is more training than the average deputy get. This is more training in active shooter than school resource officers get in the state of Florida. Yeah. And yet the only pushback is, well, we should just have more SROs and not have school people with guns. I'm like, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to call the police when someone comes in shooting? Because if you are, they're going to send a deputy with a gun. And not to mention all these people who are going through this training are going to be deputized as special deputies, which means they'll only have jurisdiction on school property. So these are going to be deputies. They're going to have more training than regular deputies and more training in active shooters. Anyone who's against this is insane. Kevin? Um, I think that ditto. <laughs> Just period. Ditto. <laughs> I think that it's um, they, they should be armed. Uh, if they want to be armed and they want to take on a responsibility. And, and I mean, everything I said was absolutely correct. And I'm, I'm sitting there when I heard 110 hours, I'm like, not only that, that's that. I don't think I would, I would garner, garner to say most civilians don't do more than your basic concealed carry class. And these guys are going to go through 110 hours. I would think by that time you can figure out whether somebody's going to be safe with the tool or not safe with the tool. And, you know, they pass through. Let those people protect those kids, period. Next. And it is all voluntary, by yeah, the way. Yeah, you're right. Just, no, one, no one's being even asked to do this. It's strictly vol- voluntarily. Yeah. yeah. I think I think that's ridiculous not to. Now, you know, a full disclosure, my wife is an administrator in a school, and obviously she's around guns. And, you know, I've, me and her have had discussions, you know, firsthand. And I do a lot of work in the school, a lot of charity work and stuff like that in the school. So I see how these teachers perform, and I know a lot of them. And there are there are, they are focused on trying to keep these kids under control. So I think it was a great thing uh, when they extended it out to the administrative staff, you know, where they're they're moving around a little bit more. They're not tied down and watching 20, 30 kids. You know, they can really float around. And I think that's a that's great. You know, just have somebody that can respond. That's up a hallway. Why you're going to wait for some dude to come from a half a mile away or two miles away on a patrol car. I don't I don't know. I don't know why people just want other people to keep them safe. I don't. Yeah. Well, and. And to be fair and, and to be clear to the listening audience, I, I think anyone who, who is legal to carry in their state should be allowed to carry in school to include teachers, administrative staff. Um, but I also understand the pushback from the other side to that. I understand why that makes people uneasy. But with this program we have in Florida, I don't understand why it makes anybody uneasy. Like they are, these people are going to be more highly trained than school resource officers when it comes to stopping an active shooter. I just, I don't, I don't understand the pushback. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. Parkland teacher arrested for leaving gun in public bathroom uh, from the same school. A teacher who volunteered to carry a gun in the school after the deb- deadly February fourteenth uh, killing was arrested Sunday for leaving his loaded gun in a public bathroom. Uh, went in, left it by mistake. A homeless guy found it and shot it. They charged the homeless guy with firing a weapon while intoxicated and trespassing. And the teacher was arrested and charged with failing to safely store a firearm and posted a $250 cash bond and was released. I think this is a big reason that (laughs) that people are concerned is stuff like this, right? Go ahead, Zane. Yeah. Yeah. Two things. One, um, maybe this guy needs to go take that training. (laughs) You know, just thinking. I think he should. Um, 
And and two, if you read the story, the homeless guy said he pressed the trigger uh, to see if the gun was loaded. Who in their right mind thinks that's the best way to see if a gun's loaded? <laughs> I mean, it, look, it's a really good way to tell if the gun's loaded or not. I mean, it's effective, but I, I'm not sure if it's a good way. Yeah, yeah that, that that whole thing is just is just crazy. But you know, once again, it's all in the training, you know. And but that's that's a good lesson for even the general public. Not we don't have to even focus on school. We've had people here in Missouri uh, that work in the state capitol that left their leave their guns in the state capitol buildings restrooms and they get in trouble. Um, it's about training, man. You got to be aware. But people are so people can be uh, very very lazy when it comes to the responsibility of many things, including guns. So it's all about training them, making them understand they're responsible, that they should be responsible. Yeah. And even stories like this, uh, they, they don't affect me to, at, at all. This is an aberration. Do you know how many people actually use public restrooms every day with firearms? And we only hear about stories like this, maybe once a quarter, something like that. So yep. it's an aberration. Uh, yeah, but just and, interesting. And there's, there's a, 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 fa- I'm a, I don't know, a fairly famous podcaster. I'm not going to say his name. Um, Can you whisper it? He's even, I know, not even going to whisper. I want to say he's even been on the show before, but they posted a thing on Instagram years back about a hanging your gun through the trigger guard on the back of the bathroom door uh, when you go. And I'm just like, that's probably not the best idea. So, you know, there's people in our community who practice stupid stuff, but at the same time, you rarely hear about these things. So it's, rarely a problem yeah absolutely i mean if it was a problem we'd hear about it every day and people there'd be you know we'd have oh, bathroom- if it was a problem we would hear about it we'd have we bathroom would hear reform. about it <laughs> exactly now i want yeah. to know what podcaster was saying to hang it through the trigger dude, guard on the back of the door yeah you want to like put that in the chat or something dude? Like, <laughs> yeah. kill me, kill me. <laughs> <I know. laughs> I'll, I'll tell you offline i don't want i don't want to throw them under the bus because this has been about three years ago but i'll, I'll tell you <laughs> offline All right. All right. perfect sounds like a plan uh, let's see. Police return guns to prohibited person. Then they have to call the ATF to arrest him. Uh, one of those cases of not my problem. Uh, so there was a guy at a shipbuilding yard in Mississippi. Uh, he complained to the security officer at the shipyard that people were stealing his property, started acting crazy. They took his badge, asked him to leave. Cops made contact with him and thought he was acting crazy. Ended up taking him and they institutionalized him for 10 days. Uh, he got out and the doctors cleared him of any mental issues. They later released him without any medications and he wanted to get his gun back, guns back. Went to court, successfully obtained a court order nine months later for the return of his firearms. Uh, the police gave it to him and then at, at some point they were like, oh, you know what? He was actually uh, institutionalized against his will, which makes him a prohibited person. And then they called the ATF and the ATF uh, went and took his guns. This is a uh, the article makes him sound like a crazy person, but uh, I don't know. What do you guys think, Kevin? I'm going to start with you. I think that is um, that is unfortunate. I would definitely have to know more and more about it. Uh, but if he was taken in and he was cleared, you know, if, if the, the therapist, the professionals cleared him, and if a judge cleared him, give a man his guns and leave him alone. And if, if we need to construct some laws to make sure that doesn't happen, let's make sure that happens. But I don't think that you go through a, a professional that clears you, a judge that clears you, because I can I can right now call and say Sean's crazy and Zane's crazy and somebody can come check on you and take you down to a hospital because they don't like the kind of cologne you got on. You know, um, and so we're going to we're going to tow that kind of line of, yeah, let me yank your freedom by playing in the semantics. Yeah, I, I'm not with that. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Yeah. Zane. I, I'll agree with you, uh, with the exception of if he was a legitimate prohibited person and had been prior to the incident involuntarily committed and met the requirements, what the, the law enforcement officers should not have given him his guns back. And I'm not saying he shouldn't have got him back. But I'm saying they shouldn't have given to him back. Just like if you hold an FFL and someone comes back as prohibited, and you get a no go on your next check, you can't transfer from the guns. Yeah. So, like uh, my whole thing is, no, I don't think he should be prohibited anyways. If, like you say, Kevin, a judge and and a medical professional cleared him, but at the same time, if he was a legitimate prohibited person, the law enforcement agency transferred firearms to a prohibited person. I think that's more of a problem. 
I thought that if you were committed against your will, that you were, that makes you a prohibited person. Uh, they kept him for 10 days. This isn't a 24 hour hold or a 48 hours, uh, you know, psychological hold or evaluation or anything like that. To get someone in there for 10 days, they had to take it to a, a judge and maybe not that Rochester sh- city judge that we were talking about earlier, but, uh, this had to go to a judge and that judge had to feel that this person was a danger to himself or others. And they kept him there for 10 days. If that doesn't qualify you for being a prohibited person, regardless of what happens at the end or the outcome, I mean, you were committed against your will for a full 10 days. And, and at that point, I believe that you have lost uh, and and become a prohibited person. Yeah. And that's kind of what I'm, I'm thinking. Like I, everything else aside, whether he should or should not have been a, a, a prohibited person. Yeah. The, the, the police department, transferred guns to a prohibited person like that's the big issue here like whether we can argue about whether he should or shouldn't have been prohibited but like they gave him his guns back why and now he's being charged with i i don't know i i feel like if law enforcement's like hey you're good you know i don't have anything to i, I don't know the I cops just, messed up in this case i mean the cops yeah. absolutely without question messed up it's even worded uh, they realized that they gave the the firearms to a pro- prohibited person and then it, yeah so now he's facing federal charges because uh his local authorities are idiots yeah that, that's un- that's unfortunate yeah that that whole story is i don't i don't know i don't like that I don't, the only reason i ask people i urge people to be careful and i get i get what you guys are saying like you know 10 days that does seem extensive and I'm not saying his case wasn't, you know, but what, I guess what, what frightens me is, man, how do they play that against us? Do they start setting us up, you know, to where because you're angry about something, all of a sudden people are having you institutionalized. They're they're Now you have to wait 48 hours for a judge can see you. And so I'm like, oh, man, you've been there for two days. They, they had to see something wrong with you. I don't know. It just it really bothers me how it can be abused. Yeah. Oh, without question, especially this. uh you know, the things that we're seeing put into place in different places without due process. It's just, it, it's, it's truly scary. Yeah. yeah. Like Ken- when the president says on national TV, that we sh- <laughs> <laughs> we'll worry about due process later. MBD. Yeah. 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 Oh, due process. Meh. That's, you know, <laughs> California sheriff offers financial motive for his deputies to kill suspects. All right. So this guy was actually running for sheriff when these things were, were had and, Uh, Let me read his exact quote in responding to a question posed to him regarding specific areas of deputy training. uh, The sheriff said, when a guy makes a bad shoot on somebody and kills them, $3 million in the family goes away. When a deputy shoots somebody, which way is better financially to cripple them or kill them for the County? Uh, An off camera interview attendee states, kill them. He said, absolutely. Because if you cripple, you have to take care of them for life and the cost goes way up. Uh, he was elected to sheriff. He is now running for re-election, and now his uh, detractors and the people against him have released this video with him saying these things. So, I think uh, my opinion—I I know my opinion. I'd like to hear yours, Kevin. Why don't you uh, share with us? So, it's—I don't—I don't necessarily agree with the platform he was sharing it on. Uh, you know, it's—it's it's one of those things to where. Unfortunately, he's right. If you if you're in a shoot and you you kill someone, let's say, you know, whether let's say it's on the line, whether it's right or wrong and you're going through this whole court case, um, you know, you can give them people money and they will leave. It's the truth. It, it just it just is. Um, and, it, and you know what? To make it even even easier, it's the exact same when you start thinking about everyday people carrying guns. He's really not saying anything that doesn't apply to the everyday common man or woman. The difference is the amount of money the county might have. Uh, but if you if you shoot someone and you you unfortunately they die, if they die, then, you know, a court case, a settlement, they go away. If you cripple someone um, and I'm saying you, you know, if that happens, if you cripple them and you're going through court, yeah, dude, they can get they can civilly sue you. And the same thing they can do to that to that town. So he's right. I mean, you're replacing a knee. You're paying for rehab work. You're paying hospital bills. So I don't I don't think without knowing him personally, he's saying, yes, we're going to go out and murder people because it's cheaper. But I do think he is making an overall point. I think he's trying to anyway, that if somebody passes, we can cut a check and be done. Or do we pay? I don't know. What is what is rehab work cost? What, what, what does it cost to go to rehab for? 800 hours for the rest mm-hmm. of your life. What does it mean? Yeah, you have a cost. So I get his point. I think he delivered it wrong, 
but he's not he's not lying no i was like it, it is fact like what he said is true and i watched the video his delivery wasn't like he was inciting violence against people or anything like that zane uh thoughts uh well uh, again he, i mean he's not wrong <laughs> i mean he's not <laughs> um but and i think it's important to realize he's he he mentioned a bad shoot and i think that's kind of the key word um in in this politicized you know world we live in everything is there's a lot of scrutiny on law enforcement and while he's not wrong i don't think like you guys have both said he delivered it very correctly um i think the bigger issue is to just train your guys to shoot to stop a threat and if they live they live if they die they die and not be worried about it and then at the same time we really need to get the political aspect out of judging whether a shoot is is righteous or not there's been some some very questionable ones lately and there's been some not so questionable ones that have all been like thrown in the limelight and it's and again, like he said, he he ain't wrong. Yeah. But that being said, he could have worded that a little better. And I mean, this is just dirty politics. They saved this video. They had this video the whole time. If they were truly concerned, it would have come out earlier, but they saved it until the very last minute. I do want to point out that in this article on this website, which uh, the Free Thought Project, I believe is what it's called, uh, they did say that per capita, this is the most deadly uh, police agency in the country uh, out of any U S County, they have uh, more deaths at the hands of law enforcement per capita than any other County. But that's such easily construed data or easily misconstrued data. Like it, maybe it's a much more violent area, a much more violent neighborhood. There's yeah. A lot and of and I mean, I'm, I'm on, I'm on record on, even on this show uh, being very, very critical of law enforcement. So, and I'm, I'm probably one of the, panelists that's ever been on the show probably one of the most critical of law enforcement but at the same time like you said you, maybe it's a really high crime area too so maybe a lot of people need shot you know there's there, there's always that you know so i i don't know it's i don't want to tell say this guy's a piece of crap and oh you know f this guy without more information but at the same time he's definitely not a wordsmith <laughs> no, but I, uh, well, I mean, he got elected as sheriff, so I guess he's, he's able to convey some messages to some people. All right, guys, uh, real quick before we move on, I do want to talk. Oh, wow. That's an interesting noise. Uh, but I do want to talk a little bit about Manticore Arms, uh, a company, a great company and some great friends that we've made over the years. Uh, they support a lot of shows on the firearms radio network, uh, gun funny this week in guns. We like shooting. And, uh, not just that, but just really good people. They make their products in the United States. It's, you know, kind of, uh, one of those rags to riches, Cinderella stories. Sven was an architect, or I'm sorry, riches to rags stories because he was an architect and then he decided to start, uh, inventing and manufacturing gun parts. And they make comfort parts for, for your rifles and, and for your firearms, like the Tavor, the, the, uh, uh, what is it? The Bren, the Scorpion, the AR-15, the AK-47. Go check them out. If you've got any, any modern sporting rifles, anything like that, go check out manticorearms.com. Uh, take a special look at their muzzle devices and their transformer rails. I truly love them. Coupon code is TWG10 at manticorearms.com, and we will absolutely uh, appreciate you going and checking them out. So we've got another story from the New York Times. Uh, Phyllis, Philadelphia Starbucks arrests outrageous disarmor everyday life for others. Now, Kevin, I know you wanted to talk about this. Why don't you lay it down for us? Yeah, so um, I don't know, man, probably about a week ago, so give or take, uh, two gentlemen were in a Starbucks, um, and this is kind of just summarizing the story quick. Uh, Starbucks, apparently in that region of the, the country or that area, you have to have a code to go into the restroom, something along those lines. Mm-hmm. And But they want you to be, they want you to patronize the store before they will give you the code. You have to buy something. Apparently, these guys were waiting on a third friend to come in. Uh, they wanted to use the restroom. They were denied access to the restroom. Uh, so there were some uh, polite. Nobody ever said anybody raised their voice or anything. Some words exchanged. Uh, what a, the barista, barista, I guess, whatever you call person that works there. Yeah. yeah. Asked the gentleman to uh, to leave, and they refused. They're like, no, we didn't do anything. You know, nobody's like getting violent here. We just 
uh, disagree with something. I'm like, we got a friend coming. We're going to hang out till he gets here because that friend was paying for everything. Um, they called the the police. They said, we're going to call the police. They said, okay, fine, call the police. But at this point, they're kind of, they're, they're standing up for themselves. Uh, they call the police. The police show up. Of course, uh, the police ask the gentleman to leave. They politely refused. They're like, no, we didn't do anything. Um, so the officer that responded, you know, called for more, more help, not because the guys were like a threat. He just was trying to like, just get it solved without anybody resorting to violence of any sort. Um, more cops get there. I think it's like eight cops at the end of it. And they finally arrest the guys for, uh, you know, loitering, trespassing and, and escort them out. Like no police brutality, nobody getting beat up, none of that. Uh, the guys weren't acting a fool and they escorted them out. Now, there are two things I want to pull out of that. The first one is going to be the more touchy one. A lot of people are mad at the police. Uh, they're mad at the police for it. And the only thing I would like to leave people with is this. A, as far as them calling the number of cops they called, you have to be careful with how you judge that because he was trying to avoid an incident. And sometimes people can see a boat ton of people standing around and they just want it to go away, you know? So they didn't, they didn't abuse the guys. Now at the same time too, the police have a responsibility to the, the community members. And if somebody's in your house and you say you want them to leave, you can call the police on them. Uh, if a business says they, they don't want a person there, the police have to escort you out. It's, kind of what your tax dollars pay for, whether we like it or not. Uh, so the police escorted the gentleman out. And a lot of people were coming down on the cops. I'm like, really, in that situation, they were just doing what they had to do. If you have a beef, it's going to be with the Starbucks. Now, apparently that particular Starbucks is in a commercial area, more of a commercial uh, area, There's a lot of offices and things like that. So there are uh, other stories of other minority um, lawyers and professional businessmen that have been harassed in that Starbucks that they talked about documenting and things of that nature. Uh, these particular gentlemen were commercial real estate agents and the guy that they were meeting, he was, he happened to be a white guy and he came in like, what did they do? They, these are commercial real estate agents. What did they do wrong? Um, so I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's one thing when we have a problem with Starbucks, that's fine. I'm, I, I, you know, people there say that Starbucks is an issue. That Starbucks can be an issue. I'm not going to say it's not. I think what they did was jacked up and wrong. I just do. At the same time, let's make sure we're channeling our energy in the correct way. And if you own the business, whether you were right or wrong and you ask somebody to leave, when you call the police, you expect the police to escort the people off your property. Right. If you refuse to leave uh, right, wrong or indifferent, you're probably going to be arrested. And I think that there is no other there's no way you can be arrested, arrested in a more peaceful manner than those guys were. So I don't think that we should be in this situation mad at the police. I think our issue ought to be with Starbucks. So that's my take on it. Zane, any thoughts there? Yeah. So a wise man, once much wiser than me, uh, I can't remember who said it. Otherwise, I'd give him credit. Once said that uh, using enough force soon enough can keep you from having to use too much force later. Um, so by calling in a bunch of other cops to come help him, pro- you know, and probably was a good idea because you see time and time again, when someone doesn't use enough force soon enough, doesn't spray somebody quick enough, doesn't tase somebody quick enough, doesn't call backup quick enough, they have to shoot somebody. Mm-hmm. And then when you shoot somebody, then it's a really big deal. So, no problem with that. Um, as for a private business telling you to got to leave, you're, you're trespassing once they tell you got to leave. Yeah. I mean, at least in Florida. I don't know how it works in the rest of the country, but in Florida, if the company says, hey, you got to go and you don't go, you get arrested for trespass. Now, as for the Starbucks, so I'm complete agreement so far. As for Starbucks, I mean, if, I've heard, I don't know how true it is, but I've read reports that they've actually denied, uh, you know, on duty cops from using the, the restroom in this same exact place. I mean, if your policy is, you know, restrooms for customers only, yeah, I mean, that's your policy, whatever. If they're waiting on someone else, then, I mean, there's obviously a miscommunication there. Uh, I, I don't want to, I don't drink Starbucks, so <laughs> I don't really care one way or the other. Like, but at the same time, like I see their point. I also see the point of like, leave people alone, like let people be, but I just, you know, it's a private company. They can do what they want. 
You know, yeah. and, and and people can get outraged with a private company for doing what they want and vote with their wallets. So yep. yeah, I, I agree with that. And uh, Starbucks now is going to close all their stores on May 29th for uh, racial bias training, which, okay, that's fine. Uh, maybe they also need to take some time while they're doing that on how to not to burn their coffee. Oh, <laughs> there's also a fake coupon going around. Uh, it started on 4chan, and it's a coupon code for free coffee, and the fine print says only available to – um, African American individuals or those who identify as such at time as purchase. And it looks like legit, but it's totally fake, obviously. And I'm just curious as to how many people are going to print this thinking it's real and try to get a coffee. And it could be interesting to see if there's more problems a stem from this. You, but you know what? I will, I will also say I'm not a big, you know, look, I'm not a big coffee drinker. I'm a guy that I like those little flavored creamers. So I like a little bit of coffee with my creamer. <laughs> Like I just blow the thing over creamer when I drink it. I don't really know that, but and I'm not like I I'm not I don't go out of my way to go to a Starbucks. It's not something I do. So, but what I will say is this: um, when you when you make a mistake, one thing I can I will give him this: the CEO owned it. He owned it. Did it? And he owned it. He shut, I don't know how much money. I didn't look it up, but I can only imagine how much money you're losing by closing eighty thousand locations uh, in a day. And the fact that they're and I'm and you know I'm no friend of Starbucks. They their gun policies and all that. No friend of them. But once you've made a mistake and you own it, and then you shut down eighty thousand location to train. I don't know how many thousands of employees on a situation. I got to respect that. They definitely yeah. take it serious. That's for sure. Yeah, but you know what? Like the same could be said for dicks when they're like, "Oh, we're going to destroy our AR-15s." Like for the people who don't agree with us, it's like, well, at least they owned it. So, no, I, mean, I, I mean, see both it, sides. I mean, on the, I, as far as there's a, a racial tone there, like I own the fact that there might be a, a, a standing issue with the way that people are complaining about how there might be a racial undertone. I just think in that in that segment of it, the only thing you can try to do, well, once you own it, is fix it. Dicks are just being yeah. what they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, right. I, I don't. I don't disagree with you at all. I'm just, you know, pointing out that, you know, not everyone's going to agree. Uh, I, I, like I said, I could care less or couldn't care less what Starbucks does because if I want coffee, I got a coffee pot somewhere over how you, there. How do you burn coffee though? I'm curious. About oh that. man, if you go, uh, no, so, no, it's possible. Oh, I'm, it's possible. I am Dutch Brothers for life, but every time I go to Starbucks, because I'm like, you know, coffee's coffee, but I go to Starbucks, it just tastes burnt to me. I don't know what's going on, if it's just me or... So the problem is, you probably drink your coffee black, do you not, Sean? I do, I do. Okay, see, me too. And I don't like Starbucks coffee either. I think people love Starbucks so much because of all the crap they put in their coffee. They're actually, their coffee on its own merit, not, not, not very good. No. When you put a ton of sugar and cream in it, sure, it, you can make anything taste good. So... Mm. Uh, I, I agree. All right. Thank you guys. Uh, next up, I'm, I'm offended. I've got three stories. I'm just going to briefly paraphrase them and let you guys weigh in on them as they were. Uh, first up, California wants restrictions on guns and social media. Fact check bill could force bloggers and podcasters to shut down. Uh, basically, what this is, is they want uh, people to have mechanisms in place of how they're going to verify their news. Uh, kind of interesting. Seems a little bit like a restriction on the First Amendment, but I think they're tr- what they want to do is cut down on fake news, as it were, but... I, I really don't know. Next up, Republican congressional candidate wants senator charged for picking up a rifle at a press con- conference, a violation of New Jersey law. And I think that this is an example. So a Republican senator wants uh, – I'm sorry, re- Republican congressional candidate wants an actual senator charged because at a press conference, he picked up an AR-15 and then he set it back down, which is – it is a, – a, I mean he broke the law. That it, Based on the way their their law is written, he absolutely broke the law. So that's the next one. And then, of course, Dix doubles down on virtue signaling by saying they are going to destroy uh, all of the AR-15s that, they, uh, that they're that they taking out of their stores, to which I say, who cares? It's your property. You already paid the companies for it. I don't care what you do with it. You're all idiots. Uh, any thoughts on those three stories, guys? Oh, I got a lot of thoughts. <laughs> Go ahead, Zane. Lay it down. Uh, so I'll skip the California one because – California being California. Uh, so let's talk about the thing in New Jersey for just a, a second. Yep. Um, well, normally I'd be on the, you know, you know, stop being, stop virtue signaling, quote unquote, stop being, you know, 
But at the same time, I got to think that, you know, if I go to New Jersey and visit my buddy, say Tony Simon, you know, right? Mm -hmm. We all, we're all friends of Tony Simon here. If I go visit my buddy Tony in New Jersey and we go to go to the range and I have one of his rifles in my truck and get pulled over, they're going to enforce this law against me because they enforce this law against Shanine Allen. So, you know what? F this guy. Enforce the law against him. I, like, I th- normally, normally I'd be totally against it and be like, you know, this is stupid. But at this point with New Jersey, F it. It's a good Whatever. demonstration of how Throw ridiculous it is. Yeah, I agree. And then that last one? Uh, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> buy, your gu- buy your guns from someone that isn't dicks. I, I completely agree. Uh, Kevin, thoughts on those three? Um, I'm, ditto with Cali, man. It's, it's California. That sucks. Um, uh, talking about the, the Jersey, uh, ditto again. <laughs> If, you know, hey, if you're gonna do it, if you're gonna do it to innocent people like Shanine, uh, well, let's do it to the politicians too, right? And it's all fair and love and war, baby. Yep. Um, and let make them go through the process. I want to see a trial. I want to see everything. And then when it comes down to uh, uh, Dix, I think that you, you, I mean, you both of you guys are right. Look, a, they already bought the merchandise. They're not sending it back to the manufacturers. That money's already in circulation. Uh, we don't give them any money from our pockets because so they don't make their profit uh, that they were banking on. So they're losing money and they don't want you to have AR anyway. So if they want to, you know, be true to their name and destroy them, and there's somebody, no matter how many of those uh, platforms they have, trust me, there are guys right now sitting at home taking building way more than they're going to destroy. So it's fine. Yeah, I totally I heard, agree. I heard an interesting point about that. Someone brought up that, you know, they could, instead of destroying them, they could donate them to law enforcement agencies that have like a, a terrible budget and can't afford patrol rifles. Mm. But, but then that would force people like me to point out the fact that obviously Dix understands that AR 15s do serve a self defense purpose. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they have to, they obviously have to destroy them because they can't admit that. Right. <laughs> Uh, without question. And guys, that brings us to our full auto news segment. Kevin, uh, you wanted to talk about Chick-fil-A, which I always want to talk about Chick-fil-A. It's delicious. Well, what, what'd you have? Um, I'm just, uh, so the, the, the thing with the woman pulls a gun doing a, a, a fight in the Chick-fil-A, uh, drive through. So now look, depends on what she ordered and how that lady was holding her up. I can see her getting angry. Yeah. All right. You know, especially sometimes Chick-fil-A's aren't close. You got to drive a little bit where I'm at to get to one. Um, but the gun comes into play. Uh, Chick-fil-A is delicious. I think they're getting all kind of free advertising right now. Um, but it is delicious. The point being with guns, though. So this lady pulls a gun doing an argument in the drive through for whatever they're arguing about. And then people see that and they start forgetting the, the, the great feeling your taste buds get when you bite into some of that fresh, delicious chicken. Yeah. And they start thinking about, oh, look, a gun, guns, guns. Crazy people have guns. Um, I would like to point out to everybody. I don't know this lady's background. I don't know if she's like a true two way advocate or anything like that. I don't know. Uh, what I would say is, though, you need to be careful when you're carrying around a responsibility of a firearm. You shouldn't be getting into silly dust ups anyway, because you understand that you literally have the power of life and death and a, a ton of responsibility. And you're representing millions of Americans when you do that. Um, stay out of foolish situations, no matter how good the sandwich is. Mm-hmm. OK, I love the lemonade, too. All right. Just just avoid it. It's just stupid. That's all I want to say. Every time I go to Chick-fil-A, I just all I can think of is damn, damn, damn. <laughs> that guy that because that's how it makes me feel. But also the only time I want Chick-fil-A is on Sunday. I don't know what's going on with my psyche. Uh, it, but yes, it is a character flaw that I have. Oh, dude, that was that's a thing. So when I was when I transferred to the Marine Reserves, my unit was like right around the corner from a Chick-fil-A and I don't know if they still do, but they used to have an outstanding military discount. And because it was a reserve unit, we only went to drill on Saturdays and Sundays. So by the time we remembered, Oh, we should go get some Chick-fil-A. They were closed. (laughs) (laughs) So ridiculous. (laughs) Oh goodness. All right. uh, Zane. Now I know you're a huge Taylor Swift fan. I am. What's your story? Uh, So Taylor Swift fan robs bank and uses money to try and impress her. <laughs> and Zane, all I got was to this say you? Is, no, it wasn't me, but all I got to say is the haters are going to hate, 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 hate. <laughs> oh, there we go. I, I guess she's going to have another ex boyfriend to uh, to sing about in her songs. I mean, she can write a song about this guy. 
<laughs> yeah. Maybe that was his goal. Maybe that was his goal. Maybe. I think I think that would be pretty yeah. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> So, Kevin, thank you so much for uh, for joining us for the first time. Tell us what you've been up to, where people can find you, and all that good stuff. Yeah, man, I've just been um, talking to, talking on great platforms like this. Um, you can check me out. Uh, if you want to follow me personally, go on uh, the tube that watches you that uh, on NOC Firearms Channel. Uh, if you're on the Book of the Faces, it is NOC Firearms Training for Northern Arms. Look at my new uh public page KD for Kevin Dixie of NOC or just Kevin Dixie. Um, and I'll probably just make you like the other one. And if you're on Instagram, it's at NOC firearms training and on Twitter at NOC uh, firearms. And if you want to see some very interesting segments, you can also go over to uh, NRA TV.com or about four or five segments. We'll be over there doing some stuff with people. Um, other than that, man, just staying busy, moving around the world, trying to get the message out, trying to get everybody uh, linked in together get the powers together so we can, uh, we can keep winning the fight, man. So I've got a, I've got a funny story. Uh, Kevin and I have talked many times before, uh, at shot show this year, I believe it was the first time we had actually met in person. Every mm-hmm. time I'd ever seen Kevin, like his, uh, his on his, like his Facebook profile picture and everything, he had ear protection and eye protection on. And so when I saw him at shot show media or industry day at the range, he looked exactly like I knew. And I was like, Hey, what's up? And we talked for a few minutes and it was cool. Uh, maybe that night or like a couple nights later, something like that. Uh, he walked into, uh, a hotel bar, I think is what we could call it with yep. some other people that I knew. And they introduced me to Kevin and I was like, Hey, what's up? How are you doing? I had never seen him just in normal everyday street clothes. So it was like the first time I ever met him. And he looked at me a little bit weird. Like, yeah. I don't know what this dude's problem is. And then like a couple minutes later, I was like, wait, wait a second. I know you. <laughs> <laughs> And he looked at me like I was insane. <laughs> but it happens. And then what was funny, and I, I did want to give you a hard time, but what was funny, I'm like, um, dude, there aren't many of me around. <laughs> it, shouldn't, it, it shouldn't be that hard. In my, def- in my defense, there was three black dudes standing right there. I was a little bit overwhelmed. I didn't, I didn't know what I was looking for. I mean, that could be, that could be a lot at one time. I get it. I get it. <laughs> but no, I just thought I felt like a real idiot because like, we had just talked like that day or the day before or something. It was, uh, it was not my fine, finest moment, but we actually at that bar, uh, we sat there and we actually had some really good Frank discussions. And it was one of my favorite moments of, of shot show 2018 actually. Yeah. And I think the rubber dummies thing was good too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Really good stuff, man. To go check out Kevin. He's doing a lot of great work. Uh, Kevin, I saw that video of you changing that lady's mind at the protest or something. And I thought that was awesome. I just thought, I think you're a great advocate. I think you're articulate and you're exactly the kind of person that we need on our side, man. So I'm glad to have you and welcome to the show. Oh man. Thanks for having me, dude. Glad to be part of the team. Zane, the exact opposite. Don't value you in any way, shape or form and don't respect anything you say. Where can people find you? I don't, I don't blame you one bit. Um, (laughs) You can find me all over the interwebs, um, firearmsinsider.tv, right here on the Firearms Radio Network at the Gun and Gear Review podcast. We recorded episode 223 last night. Everything was 223 in nature, you know, because that it. makes sense. Love it. Um, mm-hmm. You can find me at my, you know, professional stuff at Contextual Defense and Consulting on Facebook. Uh, I'm pretty active in the This Week in Guns face or the This Week in Guns uh, private group on on Facebook. I post a lot in there and give people a hard time. I'm all over the interwebs. You can find me. I'm writing reviews. I'm making videos. I'm, you know, doing all the stuff that is expected of gun people. I love it, man. And just so everyone knows, I'm just kidding. I actually value Zane's contributions very, very <laughs> much, and he knows it. And if he doesn't, now he does. That's so sweet of you. I know. Yeah. I, it almost made me throw up. Don't worry. <laughs> so go check out these two guys and all the other stuff that they are up to. Uh, we truly appreciate it. Go check out our sponsors as well. Patriot Patch Company and tra- uh, Manticore Arms. I don't know why I almost said Transformer Arms. That would be a very cool company name as well. Uh, Manticore Arms, the coupon code is TWG10. Go buy some parts. Check them out. Let us know what you think. If you buy some, send us the receipt and I'll send you a This Weekend Guns t-shirt. Uh, it's a new thing that we're going to do. So we truly appreciate it. Thanks for checking them out. Thanks for listening to the show. And guys, This Week in Guns is produced and made possible by Kenny Ortega and is a production of the Firearms Radio Network. We will see you next week.